In today's tutorial we're going to work on not your granny's pillow. This is a miter square and I'm going to show you how to make one of these pillows right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarninspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on not your granny's pillow and this is a miter square that we have here and we start at one edge and we go all the way to the other. The advantage to this is that you can get any size pillow form that you would like to do and just stop when it gets to the size that you need. So if your pillow was half the size you could stop right around here and then you could form your pillow from it. So you're going to do two panels that you can either do the same colors or you can switch the colors depending if you wanna turn your pillow around if it has a different look and you're just going to go all the way around it and just crochet in order to bring it together but the final edge that you crochet you gotta slip in your pillow form first so that you can trap it on the inside. So in today's tutorial I'm going to use this jewelry box as my little pillow because it's just easier to see on camera. We're gonna use a size I five and a half millimeter crochet hook today and some Karen one pound yarn. So let's begin. So let's begin. We are going to create a magic ring in order to start and it's called an adjustable ring on the pattern. So how you do it is that you have the tail and you put the tail in front of you just like this. Hold out two fingers and take the yarn that's leading to the ball and go around once and cross over the top of your fingers. And I'm using this finger to stabilize this. I'm going to use my hook, come up underneath the first string, grab the second and I want to grab the string that's leading toward the yarn ball and just lock it by pulling it through. And there is my adjustable ring. We have slower tutorials available on how to do magic rings and adjustable rings if you need that. So that's how you get started on this and now let's begin working on the pillow. So let's begin row number one. We're simply going to chain three. One, two and three and this counts as a double crochet in the rules of this particular pillow. We're going to double crochet right into the uh, ma adjustable ring or magic ring. Make sure the two strands are going up over top of your hook and just double crochet. We're now going to turn a corner. So to turn a corner in these particular pattern you have to chain three. So one, two and three and coming back into the magic ring I need you to double crochet two more times and that's the very corner of your pillow. Okay, so double crochet two times. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to pull on the strand. Okay, so just pull on it and this will pull everything nice and tight and then use a darning needle at the end just to lock it into position. So here's the corner so you have one side and here is the other. Let's turn our work and begin row number two. Now this pillow has texture so it's asking us to do the back loops only when we're going to work on this stuff. So let's begin row number two. We're going to chain three. So one, two and three and we want to go in the back loops only so we go into the very next double crochet available to you. If you're unfamiliar with crochet there's always two strings. Let me pull this out. There's always two strings. The string that is closest to you is called the front loop and the string furthest away from you is the back loop. And so we wanna play within the back loops. So we go to double crochet but just don't go into both stitches and just go into the back loop only and double crochet. So every time you hit a corner which is your very next stitch because you can see you've run out of stitches there's always gonna be the same thing. It's always going to be two double crochets so go right into the gap. So one and two and then you are going to chain three. So one, two and three and back into the same gap space, the chain three space and double crochet two more times. That's your new corner. So on the other side what we had here is that we had the chaining of three that counts as one. We had the one going in the back loop. So on these ones here that we're gonna have two on that side too. So just look for the double crochets that you have to fill in. So making sure you go in the back loops only. Just like there. And we want to go into the back loop then of the turning chain that you started with. So I'm going to show you this again. So let's uh, continue and move up to row number three. So we turn our work and go for number three. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. That counts as the first one that you can see down here. So we jump to the next one. Back loops only and we keep back looping uh, this double crochet until we get to the corner. Okay, so you're gonna be increasing more and more stitches as you go. It's gonna get bigger and bigger. And then in the corner it's always gonna be the same. There will be two double crochets. So one and two followed by a chain three. So one, two and three and then 
double crochet two more times into the same space. So there is your new corner and so then the back loops only for the remainder until you get to the other side here. So just continue along. So I'm not really counting I'm just looking for the stitches. If you need to count that's up to you. Um, what we're going to do at the end of this particular thing I'm gonna show you how to change color and we're gonna do that. So make sure you go in the back loop only on the turning chain just like this. So you can see you're getting a little bit of texture and I'm gonna show you how to change color next. To change color what I would do is fasten off the color completely. So I don't wanna carry my yarns I just wanna fasten off. It's up to you and how you want to do it. So I'm just gonna pull through and I'm just gonna weave it in a few of the spaces. So I wanna just be conscientious of where I'm stopping and starting. So if I finished here I wanna start here in the next one. So I wanna turn my work and begin the next color. So I'm gonna start the next color with the slip stitch or the slip knot sorry. So just put in my hook and we start on the top of the first turning chain. Okay so just going in and fasten on. So just take the straggler and the yarn and fasten on. And pull through and just like the instructions say then we have to chain three. So we have one, two and three and then back loop only again as we go across into the gap space. So one, so I don't really need to count it because I'm just looking for the stitches. If you wanna count that's up to you. I trust myself I've been crocheting a long time. So this is a no brainer kind of project that you can work on. You can do afghans like this as well. I'm um, just continuing to get bigger and bigger. Okay, so once you get to a gap space then you are going to always do the same thing. You are going to do two double crochets, chain three and two double crochets. Like that. Okay and then the other side then you gotta finish it off. So you're gonna go back loop only. And you're going to continue to grow this as big as you need to. So not all of us can find the same size pillows that are uh, available in the diagram or the pattern. And so then you just have to make do with what you got. You could use your own polyfill if you needed to. So once you get to the edge just turn around. Okay and then chain three, one, two, three, back loop only again double crochet to the next corner space. So you see a lot of visual kind of effects done with this kind of stitch. Um, especially on Pinterest with these kind of miter squares. This is how it's done. So just go across all the way to the gapping space. Okay and the gapping space always the same. So the key concept for this is that if you're doing a pillow you gotta make sure the pillow form kind of matches um, what you have on the, on the top side. So if you have like a darker top you'd want a pillow that's darker. You can find those kind of things I believe in craft stores or online. Um, different colors of pillows. Sometimes what I do to be quite honest with you is I will buy a finished pillow uh, from places like Walmart or, where, or those kind of stores and uh, that are the right color and then I would just use those as a, as a form instead of actually getting a pillow form from a craft shop. So that's kind of what I would do. So you're going to just continue to go along and get as big as you need to go. And what I'm gonna just do then after this is that I'm gonna show you and just uh, briefly talk about how to put these together and uh, to finish it off. Okay. So that would be how to do a miter square just like this. So if so once you get the sizes that you need you're gonna need to do two of these panels. So uh, just for example it's a big sofa size just like you saw in the opening photo. So this is what it will look like as a miniature. So you can either just it's front and back so you can either match it. So both the loops kind of line up to each other. Okay so it looks the same or you can turn it. It doesn't really matter because you will never really see both sides at the same time. But just for tutorial reasons I'm going to make sure that they line up today. So what we have to do is that we have to grab another piece of yarn and starting off in one corner. Okay and what we're going to do is that we're just going to just slip through one of the stitches. So I'm gonna start up here just easier. So I'm going to go through the first top turning chain on the one and then I'm gonna go through the top turning chain on the other on the other side and I'm just going to fasten on. So just kinda go up over top and then just bring it through like that. So now I want to chain one 
and I want to single crochet in that same one just to get me going and then I just wanna match the stitch. So I come to the next one on the front and I come to the next one on the back through and I'm just going to single crochet. So you're gonna go all the way around just equally spacing. So when you can see the stitches just like this, it's really quite easy. On corners, you're going to apply three single crochets into a corner. So the trick to this is that you gotta make sure you don't accidentally go all the way around without inserting your pillow. So you're going to just continue to go around and you don't need to put your pillow in yet. It just makes it more awkward for you. Okay, and just continuing to match everything that you got going on. So in the corners here, it said to do three single crochets. So one, two, and three. And you just simply turn so you come to the next one and the one on the other side. And just single crochet. Once you line these things up, they become really quite easy. And as you crochet them more, they stick better and better together. So then it just gets really quite easy to do this part. So once you're at this part, you pretty much feel like you're finished anyway. So it's just a matter of going around. So what happens when you get to an edge that I'm about to get to and there really is no um, stitch work. You just have to equally space it. Just make sure you do the same thing on both sides. Okay, so I'm coming into the edge. So the edge one here and the edge one on the other side, there's going to be three single crochets. So one, two, and three. So now I can officially turn. That was my third. So you just wanna equally space. So come down and partial of the first post, partial of the post on the other side. And just work your way down like so. So you just kinda wanna match what you got going on the front to the back and it will do a nice job for you as well. I'm trying not to avoid to go into any chain or any spaces. I wanna go into actual physical stitch work because if you go into a chain space, you're gonna rip open those um, it's gonna pull open the stitch work and it's not gonna be very pretty. So you always wanna kinda go into a chain at some point, not into an actual gapping space. And I'm trying to get the same on both sides. So you're gonna just be consistent. Once you get uh, your rhythm on this, it becomes a lot more easier. Um, my angle in which I crochet here on the table isn't always, um, it's helpful to teach you but it's not all actually always easy for me in order to, uh, because my body positioning. So you're gonna come all the way to the end in just a moment. Okay, so the end, the last one here, there will be three single crochets in there as we turn the corner. So I'm just gonna come in, gonna come in there do three single crochets. So if I had a pillow form that was the exact same size of my small little sample, I will have um, slid it in here at this point. So you slide it in and then what you're just gonna do then, as, now that you have your three, you're just gonna go across the final edge with your pillow form inside and it will be permanently locked inside your work as you continue to crochet along. So you just wanna take your time now. Um, what has here, there is actually reverse stitching available to you. So I'm going to finish this off camera and I'm gonna show you how to do the final edge going all the way around. Once you get this first one going around, it just uh, is a lot easier to do the second round and I will show you that in just a moment. When you get all the way to the final corner, we started off by just attaching and then we did a chain one. So just, you have to put in two single crochets and then join it to the beginning like that. Okay, so here's what it kinda looks like at this point. So now round two, we're going to start reverse single crochet. This is also known as a crap stitch. So we're going to chain one first and we come into the, we've been coming this direction so we're gonna go back in that direction but not turn our work. So we're just going to put the hook into the last sti single crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through and then yarn over, pull through two. So we then come into the next stitch available to you. So going in, Yarn over, pull through, pull through two. And this is a, a going backwards. So going into the next one, pull through, pull through two. This creates a really kind of a, a, uni a unique uh, look. So you just, you will have to get in the swing of this. The first time I ever did this kind of stitch, I was like totally confused. Well, more than I already am. And uh, 
it's just a matter of getting into the rhythm of doing this. And what this is going to do, it's gonna create a really cool edge for you. It's almost like a rope um, kind of coil. And you just simply go into every stitch around. So on the corners you don't have to worry about adding extra stitches. You just go reverse single crochet into each stitch all the way around. See, isn't that neat? So you get a really neat uh, effect. There is also tassels if you wish. Tassels uh, to some people are completely out. Some people are completely in. Um, that's up to you if you would like to do that. There are instructions available in the pattern on how to create tassels. If you would like to be able to do that, I leave that up to you. And uh, simply just continue to uh, reverse single crochet all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, once you're all the way back around, you just uh, reverse single crochet until you get to that first one. And then what you just have to do is just fasten this off. So just cut your yarn and just using a darning needle you can just slide in the, the tail. So just fasten off. Okay, so because you are gonna use this on a sofa, I'd recommend that grabbing a darning needle and just kind of hide in the work. Let me just grab a darning needle and quickly show you. So we're going to just grab your end and a darning needle, slide it in. And now your work can never stretch in three different directions at the same time. So just sliding it underneath some stitch work in one direction, sliding it back in the same direction but going through a different path so that it doesn't uh, come out and then going back for the third time like this. And what this will do is that it will permanently lock that so you can simply just trim your work at this point right down to the wick and you can just kind of shape it and your pillow will have been inside so one side you can have a different color than the other side and uh, you can have a lot of fun with these kind of things if you would like to and this is how you do a miter pillow. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Your Inspirations. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.